Good evening, all. I wrap scene, and here we are getting out of 5.30 p.m. Central Time. I am early, intentionally. I, like so many of you, are going to have to go to dinners. <laughs> the wife drags me out, our friends. They're going to be leaving for out of town soon. Let's all get together, blah, blah. So it starts tonight. Okay, I'll have a good time. It'll be drink and eat, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, this is your financial market review, and it is for Tuesday evening, and we're at the 12th of December. So there's a lot to talk about. First of all, CPI came in not soft, sticky as can be, not dropping. Therefore, it did not give the Fed ammunition to get very aggressive. I think the Fed will say that they are watching. They are not happy in some manner that inflation, while it's come down, it's become sticky all of a sudden. They did not get the break that they wanted to see in housing. It is still very sticky. Now, word is by many analysts that there's a lot of new projects come the spring that will have been completed. There'll be more on the market. And if there's more on the market, that maybe then the rents will start coming down, easing things. I can't argue that. I don't know enough about it, but that's what I'm reading. Uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine walked away with absolutely nothing from the United States today. He heard that we are behind him. He heard from Speaker of the House Johnson, the U.S. wants to do this, but we have to look at our own border. And if the Democrats will give the funding for that and the rules as to how we let immigrants in, they were already willing and able to vote for that. So the, really, it's up to the Democrats, not the Republicans. Democrats can blame the Republicans. I, as an American, ex-party, close that damn border. Really simple. Make the people that come in and let them in, register them, know who they are. How many terrorists are crossing? What the hell's with this Biden administration? They don't, they don't know what they're doing. Not only don't they have an energy policy, they don't have an immigration policy. How many things don't they have? And you'll say, Ira, you're so pro-Republican. That's not what I'm saying. I have voted Democratic. That is not true by a long shot. I am really a guy that goes back and forth. I'm not a hardcore anything. I vote for the people. This is not working. It's that simple in terms of the immigration and in terms of Bidenomics for America. I mean, wake up, America. All right. So as we look at the rest of it, Israel has decided to flood the tunnels. It was just when it was going to come. And because world pressure is so severe on them, they're standing there by themselves. Even the U.S. is saying they don't like the policies that are going on. They don't like that Israel saying no to the PLO being one of the ruling parties when this is all done. First of all, it's not done. Let's understand that. And while you're preparing for what it is, who knows when that's going to come. So I understand what Israel's saying. But at some point, Israel's got to understand the world has to say. They're not going to let them just do this over and over. That is going to end too. So turn on the water, flood them out. You know, what do you do when you have rats and mice? You call in an exterminator. Well, you got that going right now with those terrorists. So go for the terrorists. I, for one, I'm tired of seeing innocent, and there are a lot of innocent people in uh, Gaza being killed. Do you like seeing it? I hate seeing it. So if they got to go after the one thing and they're underground in tunnels, the hell with it. Go for it. That's my opinion, okay? And I'm opinionated, as we all know. So when you look at the mini S&P, strong. Look at this close, up 43 points for the week. You're up nearly another percentage point. By the way, if you're a subscriber, you know that I have been telling you the strongest index and the one, if you're going to be a buyer going into this whole thing, it had to be the Dow. I have said it over and over because it's got the embedded readings. You know what that is in the Bollinger Bands. Learn this. Well, third highest all-time close in the Dow today. Look how this market picked up. Now, do me a favor. A little bit of credit when I'm right and a hell of a lot of hate me when I'm wrong. I called this an inverted head and shoulder. I said that if you pick up from the head to this, and we did this over and over, let's call this the 4,300 to the 4,100 level. And if you pick it up and you add 300 points, 4,700 could be a zone that you go to. You're at 4,651. Did I pass? Do I get a gold star I can take home to the teacher? Okay. Are we trending? Per se, no. 
But yes, you know, you're not blind, you see it, but you don't have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. What you have is a market that has stayed over on test, the 18-day average. When you did lose, then you'll see it in a minute here, the Bollinger Band in a moment. You will you came down, tested just as I teach the 18-day average and took off again. Do I want my clients with new positions going into this report tomorrow? And by the way, Thursday, because you got those other four central banks. No, I don't believe that you stand on a train track as a bullet train is coming at you and you're gonna be good enough to jump out of either side. You never know what these reports bring with them and you never know the reaction to the reports. I know you think you do. I know the markets think they do. I've got 50 years, 54 years of experience, you don't. You look back and you go, oh, that was buy the rumor, sell the fact, or blah, blah, oh, it was a continuation of the pattern. I don't wanna guess that. I don't wanna be in that school. I'll come in after the fact and pick up the marbles and play. And I'm looking at it, you're at the upper Bollinger Band, and you're again trying to embed. Now embedding occurs when the slow stochastics, my version, which is different than yours, by the way, when these numbers lock in and go over 80, but they got to do it for several days in a row. So yesterday was the, a day of it. Day before was a day of it. What about the day before? Uh-uh. So guess which day it either is going to embed or not going to embed. Voila! Wednesday. We're already in Wednesday trade, and that would be the third day. Got to see if it does it. Then... I go into my mode, I'm a machine. Then I, I follow exactly what I teach in the embedded course. In the NASDAQ, not trying to embed. The NASDAQ Magic 7, you know what that is, those are those stocks that keep going. They have been the leader of this market the whole second part of uh, 2023. And they are still the ones that are the key markets. People say they're crowded, you shouldn't be in them, I've seen these reports, then you miss the move, all right? I mean, that's basically what happened and it's still happening. Then we get to the Dow. Are you noticing the embedded reading? This is why Ira said, again, third person, hey, if you're gonna be long any, you play the one that's got innately the most strength and that's this, and which one is the weakest? Ah, the Russell. Now, it is trying to embed. Can't count tonight because we don't know where Wednesday's going to close. But did it embed? Tuesday's number, both numbers over 80. Uh-oh, Monday, both over 80. And both over 80 on Friday. So you have your embedded reading. That puts me in the buy mode. So the pullbacks in the market get very interesting to me. Something else is happening. Your 18-day average just crossed over the 100. Do you see that? So there's one of your crossover numbers. The gray 200 is right here as well. That is the next character the market is going after. This is coming alive in terms of being a chart. The big support on breaks back in the here, as long as it stays embedded, I have joined into the bull camp. Will I go into the report again? There's that bullet train. I don't know which way to jump. I wait for it, which means tomorrow I have a free morning. I don't know, should I wake up late? We'll see what I do. I'll be up early. Um, in the 10-year note, we got a higher high and a lower low. You lost the embedded reading. You normally make a run to the 18-day average. You didn't do it in this market. You did it in the five-year, but you missed it in the 10. Very interesting. Uh, if you make new highs, then it's a failure. So then the rule did not work. You made the run, but you fell shy of hitting the target. This one did it absolutely perfect. Then in the dollar index, where do you often run to if you got a major report coming? You run home to mama, and mama's the 18-day average of closes, and that's what the market ran back to, and it's saying, hey, mom, help me, help me. I don't know what the market's going to do. Well, that's where you're at right now. The smart money is going, yes, I have a bullish bias, but you're overbought. You're running into resistance, and the green line, the 100-day average, supports right here, and I have a report. The smart money's going, I'll come in after the fact. And you'll say, no, you gotta be in ahead of time. Okay, you do your thing. 
In the euro currency, you went down, you hit the Bollinger Band. What does the smart money do? What do you do when you hit a Bollinger Band? If you're taking the enhanced Bollinger Band course, I know you hear me talk about it all the time, you would have known what to do. And now you're in perfect shape. You're going into the report like this. Okay, show me what's gonna happen. We then get to the British pound. Again, mama, I'm going to that 18 day average and I'm gonna sit there and see what happens and then we'll make our move. Just like a little kid, you're in the corner now. What do I do? Don't get out of the corner. Wait for the market to tell you where you're at. That'll be Thursday for that market. We then come over to the uh, these micro. You know my thoughts. I told traders what to do there. I'm more than pleased. I'm a guy that's happy. I, you know, if you if you traded that off of what I said, you did just fine. And I, not every one of these work, folks. I'm Swiss cheese. I get wrong plenty. In the Brent versus WTI crude, the lower this goes, it takes the whole market with it. And we are in a state of collapse. Listen to that word. This is a collapsing market. You're missing demand, you've got too much supply on the market, and you've got the potential now that lower prices go for OPEC to lose control of themselves. Different members will go, I can't live with this. This price is too much and you want me to cut production? No, we're not talking any longer that I'm getting $80 a barrel. I'm down to $73, $74 a barrel. And before you know it, you could be under 70. This market's falling on its own weight right now. It was interesting today to hear OPEC put out an announcement that this isn't a battle they're in for a year. This is a five-year battle. Of course it is. This battle began even though that OPEC did a fine job of protecting on the COP28 statement not to come condemning in that statement the fossil fuels. The world knows what's happening. EVs are coming, although in America they're not ready. You did see that the Ford is going to cut production in half of their electric F-150. Why? Price. It's really simple. I, I told you yesterday, I hope I did, you're starting to see GM with their new um, facilities to charge cars. And guess what? They're the smartest of the group. I've seen all these ultra modern facilities, which makes sense. You would think I got an electric car, I'm going into the Jetsons uh, place to do it and I'm gonna charge my car. Or do you go to a regular looking service station it might even have the coffee and the donuts and there are so many do today because it's gonna take you 15 minutes or so to charge your car. Might as well get something there, drink it and away you go. And they're making it look just the way they do now. Smart, smart, smart. You don't retrain everything. You put in new with the old. It works so darn good. And they, they hit it on that one. However, they are right. Here's what I don't get. I don't mind sharing this with you and we'll get on. Why would you give back 10 billion in buyouts? You got a problem. You're not quite certain where the CV thing is going. Demand can be anything if you're headed into a softer economy. I don't understand that thinking. I don't agree with it. I, it could have been a smaller amount. You keep cash for that rainy day. I don't think your investors would have mind. WTI falling just like we're getting in the other. And are you going to embed? Well, follow me because this gets very important. You would think the market's oversold. Ready? Okay, let's go back another day here. Let's go back another day. Day one of embedding. And that was Thursday of a week ago. Day two, day three, you're fully embedded. So now what's happening, each time you're going to get a rally, in my opinion, and rally can be defined as I teach it in the course. It's not just getting a rally. Remember, there are rules to it. I think it just continues to get sold and the market can go further than you think potentially to the downside. I finally am reading reports where other people are seeing what I am in America. They're going, the reason you got natural gas issues, heating oil issues, it's much warmer than normal. Yes, I know the East Coast got hit over the past 48 hours. I'm aware of that. That's not what's happening in the Midwest. It's not what's happening west of us. Iowa, Minnesota, well, above us, Minnesota, Wisconsin, going out Nebraska. No, the weather temperature is not as cold as it normally is. And that's putting pressure on all this. And look, natural gas can't get out of its own way. 
Now, there is a pipeline that is opening now that's going to be able to take excess and bring it to the ports easier. That all takes time to finish up. The pipe's built, and I understand it's turn, it's turning on. So that'll be good. We'll find a bottom, whatever the heck it is. Could be around the $2 mark, could be here. But you're getting there. It's a hard market for me to tell clients now to sell. The first bounce, and it can be vicious. Get that out of the way, and I'll get more comfortable with it. And what gets me comfortable is teaching. So join me in my morning futures video. And what do I mean by that? At 5.15 in the morning, I record a 15 minute video typically. The charts will look like you see in the background, black with all these great colors, colors everything. When you take my courses, I teach you colors. And the reason is when you look at a chart and a little bit of training on your part within a month or two, you're going, whoa, I got it. I, I get it, I, I'm not spending hours looking at a chart. It's jumping off the chart at me. Now, I cover the charts by this way. Let me explain how this comes in. I will look with you with a mixture. First, we start off, what are the reports coming out today and at what time? What is the market looking for? Next, we'll say what happened in Europe overnight and Asia. Where are we on those? Then we're going to open these charts up and we're going to start applying, and they're already there, all the studies, and we review, we review, we review review. It is based on my courses. I have found that this has kept me in the game and I kept my clients, I think, in pretty good steed over the years. And I look at it, you can see the Bollinger Bands jumping off it. There's a number of moving averages and all of a sudden it makes sense to you. And the key to me has been colors. They just lift off the chart and they go, whoa, look what that part is doing for me. The hardest thing for somebody is they take a course, they learn, they like it, and they forget to apply it. My job in the morning, my job is to keep you going and reinforce the same things over and over. Because at the end of the day, we should be able to take the name off the chart, trade the pattern, and we're either right or wrong. Now, you think about what I just said. Because the one thing I hate is that when we have a name on a chart, you come in with a preconceived idea. The only thing the name means to me, and I know you're going to think what I'm saying is crazy. The only thing it tells me is the report coming out that I should be paying attention to. Example, we're going to get tomorrow the, uh, the FOMC. Well, maybe I don't want to be in the financial arena, but I want to be in the grains, the soft commodities, the energies. They won't be impacted very much by that. When I get a major grain report, what's that have to do with the stock market? Nothing. Those are the things I want to know. Barring that, I'll go to my charts because the chart tells me what's going on. One of the things I love about trading uh, in the ETFs and the stocks for myself is I look at it, I don't have to know much about the company. The chart's telling me everything I need to know. I'm not Warren Buffett, I'm not investing. I'm looking at the market as a trade and no, not a day trader, a swing trader. You can be in these for a month, two months at a time, you never know. Go to irapstein.com under the word research. Sign up right there. That's how you do it. I, it, it the cost is going to be, think about this. It, the cost is going to be a Starbucks cup of coffee and your tip. And you're going to get 22 videos each about 15 minutes long. On the weekend, you get the weekend charts. And I try to mix everything real well for you. Each subscription includes the ability to write me. Hey, I have a question for you. I will answer. Generally, I make a video for you. Uh, and answer it that way. Hey, here's the chart. No, you're not seeing it the way you should be, or boy, you're right on the money. That's all I can do. I'm Ira. You have a good day. irapstein.com. You can move your cursor to the top here at any time. It'll take you there as well. You'll see that icon. You have a good day.